What's up, guys? This is the Crypto Cheat Sheet Show. We're doing something different here. Trey is going to explain what Basecoin is to me. I don't really know how it works. And I'm just going to ask him a bunch of questions. And we're going to see if we make anything that is worth people listening to. So we're going to talk about Basecoin. Trey, I'm going to ask you questions. So, uh, basics, base coin is a stable coin. Um, and really what a stable coin aims to accomplish is that it, it gets rid of the volatility inherent in most cryptocurrencies. And that volatility can come from really anything, but it's based on supply and demand. So, uh, what a stable coin aims to accomplish similar to what you've seen with tether and some other things is it gives traders or cryptocurrency investors a way to be in cryptocurrency without um, you can switch from Bitcoin back to dollars without actually switching back to dollars. It's, it is the equivalent of a dollar and the fact that it's pegged to it for now and it's stable. It's always going to basically be in that one to one range. So what, some of these other coins like tether that we've seen tether is completely centralized. It, um, they have a centralized database that they print new tethers when necessary and it's all manual and they burn new tethers or burn uh, existing tethers when necessary. So what stable coins tried to do is take simple supply and demand and say, look, we have an exchange rate that we have a system that's going to monitor. And when the system sees that base coin is trading for over a dollar, we are going to put more base coin on the market, increasing supply, therefore demand goes down. If it trades below a dollar, we're going to take base coin off the market and decrease supply, therefore demand is greater and price moves back up. So the cool innovation, I guess, that base coins aiming for is what we've seen in the markets on these currently is that um, they're centralized and it requires humans and manual decisions similar to what the Fed does as far as increasing and decreasing the monetary supply. Uh, Basecoin uses that same premise, um, uses the market knowing that, you know, if I'm a savvy investor, I can put a million dollars in Basecoin at 95 cents knowing that it's going to be a dollar at some point or if I own base coin and it goes to a dollar five, I can sell it knowing that I can rebuy the dollar. Um, so they they use the basic premise of that. The difference is they're using an algorithm that monitors the market to determine when to increase supply and decrease supply to keep that a little more stable on the dollar. Um, and when they uh, when they decide to do it, they don't. They, they do it via this bond and shares system where um, when Basecoin is above a dollar, they will basically buy back bonds from the bondholders, which increases the Basecoin on the market. And then they will pay a dividend to shareholders who in turn sell that for the, you know, the dividend price they got. And that also increases the base coin in the market. So now that they've increased the base coin in the market, uh, that price in theory will come back closer to a dollar, um, given that they have increased the supply and you're assuming somewhat of a static demand. Um, on the other side, say base coin were to drop under a dollar, they are going to basically sell base coin to bondholders who and it decreases the supply who are basically holding base coin knowing that they will be able to get bought out of their base coin at a higher price at some point down the road um so in theory base coin has dropped below a dollar they're going to decrease supply uh, demand takes over and price moves back up it's a fairly complex system that they're going for but the cool thing is it is decentralized um, they are aiming to create an algorithm that handles this. Whereas currently we rely on the fed and humans to make the determinations for when we need to, uh, increase and decrease monetary supply. 
How so? How does the algorithm know what the price is? Um, from, <laughs> great question. <laughs> So from what I can tell, the algorithm is basically monitoring markets and they're kind of benchmarking. I don't know whether they're using an index or what they're using, but it's basically taking um, the rates that are reported back to it and either offering bonds or buying back bonds and paying shareholders based on um, the information they're getting back from the index or market they're looking at for the base coin price currently out there. That makes sense. So, so Tether and some of these other coins that are pegged to the U.S. dollar, their strategy is more uh, like they have a certain amount of dollars in reserve. So Tether's like, uh, you know, there's two billion Tether in circulation. We have two billion U.S. dollars. If you wanted to cash them all out, we could give you an equivalent dollar for each one. So that tells the market that it's worth a dollar. So more or less when you're looking at Tether, you are just hoping that they can pay Tether out. is solvent. Exactly. And you know they could do audits and this, that, and the other, but you are relying on a centralized um, third party to decide when to increase and decrease that money supply. And if they mess up, then you're... I mean, there's not going to be any faith in Tether. So where Basecoin differs from Tether is it's aiming to solve this via code. Just um, just supply and demand. But yeah. so but it's not backed per se by anything. It's it's yeah. literally just we're gonna we're gonna do we're gonna literally either expand or contract supply to keep this thing at a dollar and we think that we can do it programmatically. Yeah. And what's cool about it, and, you know, I'll be fascinated to see if they can pull it off. But really, what they're trying to do is they're taking the existing system that has, you know, if if it's above a dollar, I know I can sell it and rebuy it at a dollar. And if it's below a dollar, I can buy it. No, I can sell when it gets to a dollar, which is already inherent in any market where they're trying to peg a coin to a dollar. But they've yeah. built upon that with this bond and share um, system where the bond market, it's going to, it's built in the sense that it's a first come first serve. So you're not going to set like, all right, I got bids to buy bonds at 20 cents. They'll never get filled. No. And if they do get filled, they're going to be so far back in the queue of getting paid out when it gets back to a dollar, they could expire and you could technically lose all your money. So what they're, what they're looking to do is create the system where um, it basically bounces back and forth. And based on the math behind and the, just the logic behind the system, it's set up to stay kind of between that 90 and dollar 10 range. It, it, they, they've done a lot of research into this and um, have kind of figured out where the, um, where the worst case scenarios are in simulations they've ran and you know, whether the simulations are correct or not, I think's to be determined, but uh, it, it's a pretty fascinating idea. And the fact that you're just not someone behind a desk, pushing a button, print more or burn more, it, you know, it's novel. Sure. So, I mean, in the future, um, say the U S dollar becomes like Venezuela's currency and it is not stable itself and you've got base coin pegged to it like what are they what is that what happens then does it just kill this whole market or is it or it well, can't, can't handle that so there's a few things to think about there and uh, you know one they've said you know similar to what the fed currently does where they use the consumer price index um, to like basically decide when they're going to buy and sell dollars uh, or you know, buy or sell or create or burn dollars. Um, that's basically what base coin could move to in the event that the U S dollar becomes an unstable currency down the road. Um, so they just, they just pipe in uh, the CPI instead of the dollar price and yep. it should work. Yeah. I mean, it, look, if you, if you can write code that can, um, basically control the uh, the supply and demand to keep this pegged to anything, 
uh, you know, currently they're going to use the dollar. Let's just say, all right, well, cool. We're going to pick this basket of goods at the grocery store, figure out what that approximately is. You can peg it to that too. It's not, it's not going to be any different than pegging it to a dollar. Sure. It's a tad more complex, but it's not going to be, uh, it's not going to be impossible if they can pull off mm -hmm. the initial part of this, which is pegging it to the dollar systematically. Yeah. So is there, I mean, no, they ICO, they had a pretty big ICO, had some pretty big investors. Is there a play here to make money um, other than like just buying anytime it's under a dollar or holding bonds under a dollar? So from what I understand about the ICO, they basically started it at 50% off and maybe there was like pre-sales before that where like if you're willing to contribute to them, most likely you're and they're successful, you're going to double your money, which you know, it, it, with what we've seen in ICOs over the past year, doubling your money seems like nothing. But, you know, if you're trying to make a $10 million play in an ICO and you are fairly confident they're going to pull yeah. this off, it seems like a fairly safe way to turn it into 20. And what I, what I think is going to happen, and again, I don't know any of this because I haven't looked into actually buying the coin. I think there's probably tranches of this where, uh, there'll be a 50% off and then 60, 70 all the way up where eventually people can buy at a dollar and their best case scenario is probably selling if it gets up to a dollar five, dollar 10, something yeah. like that. Um, uh, I do think another thing to point out about why a stable coin is, uh, it, it could be very necessary and very key is you, you look at stuff um, such as, as simple as being able to cash or to move from Bitcoin to a stable asset um, to short instead of moving all the way back to the dollar um, or even altcoins as well. That's crucial. And then the other part of it, if you if you're really looking for um, crypto to long term make a play to be a medium exchange, unit of account, store of value, whatever, you want something that like if I'm paying you a Bitcoin a month. Um, you know what you're getting every month. It's not like, hey, it could be 20K this month and 6K the next month type thing. Um, the other part of it is, let's say you buy a house with Bitcoin and um, you got a mortgage with that and the mortgage calls for a Bitcoin or half a Bitcoin a month. Well, it, there's a huge risk, uh, exchange risk there of price going way up or way down and making that contract unfeasible for either party. So having a having a, a basically a safe haven, for lack of a better term, that is a cryptocurrency that you can transact in um, opens up several of these like more complex uh, dealings and longer term contracts that you would enter in where there's an exchange of value without having to be too concerned about um you know exchange risk all right wrapping up i think i understand it <laughs> <laughs> base yeah, coin is an a decentralized stable coin algorithmically driven stable coin that in theory, should always equate to one dollar or to, um, you know, whatever whatever it is pegged to. It could be the consumer price index. It could be another currency. Um, it's 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 configurable in that way. But I think the the key feature is it's decentralized and it's algorithmic versus some of the other things we've seen such as tether which is the opposite it's more centralized it's actually backed by the physical currency or uh, well, in that case yes the u.s dollar so um, and a third party i think i'm there all right let's wrap it up Dr visit our website the crypto cheat sheet com. check us out on twitter the crypto cs join us on telegram you can get there from our website. Buy some swag, moonwear.com. Buy t-shirts, buy hats. We got sweet hats. Hoddle for life.
<laughs> Peace.